Parsing CSV data using D3. We'll discuss parsing CSV data with D3, counting rows and columns, estimating data size in terms of kilobytes, constructing and displaying text with D3 and CSS, and using D3.CSV, CSV parse, and CSV format. All that remains to be done now is to parse this CSV data, because right now it's a big string, but ideally we'd have an array of objects that we could iterate through and do stuff with. There are several libraries that parse CSV data, and D3 includes one of them. D3's module D3-DSV, which stands for Delimiter Separated Value, provides a function called CSV parse. This takes as input a CSV string, like we have, and it returns as output an array of objects, and each object represents one row of the table. The returned array also has a property called columns. Yeah, JavaScript is kind of weird like this, and I was sort of shocked when I found out that arrays can have properties. Let me just demonstrate real quick this l weird language quirk. Let's say we have an array called data, and we take this object here, and we put that as the first element of the array, and there can be a second element of the array with, I don't know, different values of foo and bar. Now data is an array, so we can say data.length is 2, data at index 0 is going to be this object, where foo is 1 and bar is 2. Data at index 1 is the second entry, but here's where things get weird. We can assign data.baz, which normally goes along with foo and bar, foo, bar, baz, just random stuff, equals hello. Now we can say data.baz and it actually works but it's still an array. We can say data at index 0, and that gives us this back. So JavaScript is just weird like this, and the D3 APIs take full advantage of this. So that's why you can access data.columns, and that will be an array of columns extracted from the header row of your CSV text. But anyway, let's use this CSV parse in our code. To use D3 functions, we first need to include the D3 library with a script tag, where the source src attribute is the URL of the library. This URL I'm going to get from unpackage. We can say unpackage.com slash D3, and it gives us a URL that resolves to the minified build of D3. Now that we've got this URL of D3, I can paste it here, and then we can use d3.csv parse. Console.log d3.csv parse our text. And now we've got this nice array of objects, and also a columns property, where each one of these objects in the array corresponds to one of our rows of our data table. See, the first object looks like this. Keyword black, RGB hex value, and which specification was it introduced in. The resulting array is conventionally referred to as data. So we can say const data equals CSV parse text. And we can do some basic summaries of the data. For example, how many rows does it have? We can access that with data.length. And then we can compose a nice message to the user and say, this many rows. It says 150 rows. How about columns? How many columns do we have? I'm going to copy paste that and say that many columns. And here we can say data.columns.length. I'm also interested in how many kilobytes this data is. How big is it as a file? We can compute that by saying text.length, the number of characters. Each character is one byte, so if we divide that by 1024, we should get that many kilobytes. 
we've got a lot of extra digits, so let me just round that with math.round. All right, now we have a simple summary of our data table. It's six kilobytes, 150 rows, and three columns. The last thing I'd like to do is somehow display this summary on our page. To do that, let's compose a message string. Const message equals an empty string, and then we can append to our message, or overwrite it rather, message equals message plus this string. Oh, we're running into assignment to a constant, so that's why we need to use let here. And I'll follow the same pattern for our rows and for our columns. Now that we've got this message, we can put it into our document somehow. We can say document.body.textContent equals message. Let's see, does that show up? Indeed it does, but we're not getting the new lines. For the new lines to come through, we can use a pre element. So let me just say pre, not pre, and we can give it an ID to sort of grab onto. I'll call it message container. Now instead of document.body, we can say document.getElementById, and the ID is message container. And it does show up, but oh, there were no new lines anyway. So we can add backslash n to the end of these to make new lines and separate these out like that. And last but not least, our message is super tiny. So we can add a little bit of CSS in a style tag here and say all pre-elements, there's only one, make the font size super big like 5EM. Or how about 7EM. All right, that did the trick. That's how you can load, parse, and summarize CSV data using D3 and fetch. By the way, there is a slightly less verbose way of doing this whole thing. Namely, we can use d3.csv and then pass in the CSV URL. That returns a promise that resolves to the parsed data. If we do it this way, we don't need CSV parse and we can compose our message in pretty much the same way. The only issue now is we don't have access to text, but we can derive the original text by unparsing it, or rather formatting it, with d3.csv format, and we pass in our data there. This is actually the preferable, more concise way to do it, so I'll move this other implementation sort of off to the side and I'll comment it out and I'll say this is how you would do it with fetch async and wait but since d3 provides this utility which does all that stuff internally you can just use this and it still works just the same that's all for parsing CSV data using d3